Now, how do we figure out how good our quantitative map actually is? The usual way is a comparison of values returned by the machine learning algorithm with actual in situ measurements collected in parallel with the overflight. So far, we have claimed that such in situ data are not available. But actually, a team from the LMU Munich did go into the field on that Sunday in May 2021 when the airborne data was acquired. You can find a shape file with the in situ measurements in folder 5 of the downloaded dataset. To import the field data, click the green icon with the white cross in the Data Sources window and add the shape file to the view. With a right click on the file name, you can add the data to the map display that already contains the modeling results. Do you see the small sampling points? Unfortunately, the number of samples is rather small, as is regularly the case with labor intensive field measurements. By zooming in, you can see that each sampling point corresponds to a single pixel of the airborne data, which in turn correspond to the approximately 5 by 5 meter elementary sampling units sampled in the field. Now, to compare our hyperspectral product with the in situ sample data, we use yet another Nmap box tool. This time, we select the Tools toolbar from the main menu and open the Scatter Plot tool. In the panel that pops up, we can select the information layers currently displayed in the map from a drop down menu. I select the agrimooc.bsq file containing our modeling results and then the in situ data shape file. Next, we select the variable to be compared in the scatter plot from each dataset. Let's start with the leaf area index, LAI for short, from both datasets. Here we go. The data appears in the scatter plot window immediately. I suggest some adaptations, for example, changing the extent of the analysis from current canvas, which is the zoom extent, to whole raster to include all data points. You can also change display symbols or colors and add one-to-one -one and fitted regression lines to the graph. I also like to limit the X and Y axes ranges, in this case to a minimum of two and a maximum of seven for both datasets, to make them visually easier to compare and I try to make the graph a little more square. Finally, I check the Swap Axes button, as it is a scientific convention that model results should always be projected to the Y axis, whereas measured data should be displayed on the X axis. Ah, now we can analyze the plot. Although we observe some scattering, we also achieve a high correlation of 0.81 with a relatively low root mean squared error of 0.58. The slope of the regression line is 0.71, which tells us that our retrieval tends to overestimate lower LAI values and to underestimate higher LAI values. Given that we have, in a couple of minutes, retrieved these results without any information besides the hyperspectral imagery, they are actually pretty good. Remember that we went into the exercise without any a priori knowledge and trained the artificial neural network on a synthetic training database with a huge range of potential values, pretty much the entire range of values to be expected in a natural environment. This means the model is transferable and could also be applied, for example, to other acquisitions of the area captured at different observation times. Okay, the correlation for the LAI turned out very nicely, but what about other variables in our data set? The in situ data also contains information about the crop height, the phenology, and the chlorophyll. While the crop height and the phenology are not part of the canopy reflectance model that we used for the training of our machine learning algorithm, and thus cannot be mapped, the chlorophyll content was retrieved. Let's compare chlorophyll. Wow, comparing in situ chlorophyll measurement with the retrieval results doesn't appear very successful. Any idea why? Well, Actually, that doesn't come as much of a surprise as chlorophyll content is a leaf level variable that is measured in the field for individual leaves. The airborne sensor, on the other hand, observes the whole canopy from above and thus senses the chlorophyll content on canopy level. These two cannot and should not be compared. So when dealing with the quality assessment of retrievals from remote sensing measurements, always double check not to compare apples and oranges. Okay, folks, that's it for the day. 
I hope you enjoyed our exercises and took away the message that the combination of hyperspectral data, canopy reflectance models, and machine learning algorithms enables us to infer high-quality quantitative information, even from remote places where no in-situ measurements are available.